and this one was probably towards the middle or later part of my time working in the kitchen. This was after I had fully transitioned over to the cooking and prep side of the house. And so I was getting ready for a shift on the weekend with an eight hour middle of the day to dinner shift, something like a 12 to eight shift in the kitchen. And I was working on a bunch of really important stuff for earth school. And so I, I basically went from a session that I was working at for upcoming test straight to my job. And as a result, I didn't get a chance to eat lunch. So I showed up to my shift having not eaten lunch and, and jumped straight into whatever it is I needed to do for the day. Now, this particular day I was showing up after lunch-ish time-wise. So I was basically helping with prep stuff for the evening, for dinner. And so I show up, again, having not eaten lunch that day, and my boss says, all right, um, we need you to help out the grill folks for prep. And they said, okay, go go do burger sets. I said, okay, I can, I can go do that. And to kind of explain what that is, this is for like a regular hamburger type grill joint, right? They would do made to order, fresh grilled burgers with different toppings and all sorts of fun stuff. But their prep stuff was all of the toppings that go on the burgers, the standard stuff. It was a sheet of lettuce, sliced tomato and onion. But they would do it in big batches in these big hotel pans by the dozens. So you have, you know, lettuce, tomato, onions in stacks, filling up an entire pan so the grill people can just grab the fully assembled set, put it on burgers and serve it and not have to chop lettuce or slice onions or whatnot. It's all prepped and ready to go. So my boss said, okay, just go do that. And go help them put all the sets together for dinner. So I said, all right, I can do that. Having done it before. So I went back to go help the, the cooks. I said, okay, what do you need me to do for, for burger prep? And I said, uh, we need you to do tomatoes. So I said, okay, I'll go grab the tomato slicer. Now, for those of you that are watching this that maybe haven't worked in a kitchen, the particular type of tomato slicer I'm talking about is, I think it's, it probably technically has a different term, but it's a horizontal tomato slicer. It's not the type of ones where you have a tomato and like the wire things that you pull down and press onto it from above and it slices it vertically. The one we used in the kitchen was a horizontal one. So it looked like a metal pl platform with feet that you stick on the table. And on the horizontal platform, you stick the, the whole tomato upright. And then there's a little track thing that looks like a hand almost that pushes it forward horizontally along the platform and pushes it through a horizontal set of blades. I think it was four or five blades parallel and perpendicular to the tomato, you're basically pushing it along the track through the blades and it comes out whole in, again, freestanding, but it's completely sliced. And so you push it through and then it comes out sliced and then you can just separate it and distribute it into whatever. Anyway, I said, okay, just do tomato, sliced tomatoes for the burger sets. And so I did that. I started working on that for a little while and I'd used the thing before. Again, it's not rocket science. But the particular tomato slicer I was using had been used for a while and the blades were starting to get a little dull. So I was working on a tomato and I pushed it through, but it wouldn't pass completely through the blades on the other side. Again, this is manual, it's not automatic. And so I pushed it through and it got stuck. About 90% of the way through on the platform, it got stuck. And so usually when that happens, you just kind of force it or pull the tomato, whole tomato through from the other side and it'll finish slicing. But you gotta be careful, otherwise it'll tear and ruin the entire tomato. So I'm using this thing, the tomato gets caught on the blades and I'm not paying attention, which is how stories like this usually happen. And I'm trying to unstick the tomato from the blades and get it through and I cut the side of my thumb. If you're looking at your thumbnail, like I'm looking at my left thumb now, I don't remember which thumb it was at this point on the side of my thumb, maybe about halfway up between the nail and like the start of the nail and the top, just on the corner. And I, I nicked it straight through 
with the tomato slicer blade and immediately started bleeding. Now, it wasn't super deep, didn't go like to the nail, but again, it nicked all the way through the, the side, of, basically the side of my thumb right next to the nail. And so I stopped what I was doing. I was like, all right, well, I'm going to throw the tomato away now. And we were required to wear gloves in the kitchen. You're always required to wear gloves. I probably went through 100 pairs of gloves a day. But they were just uh, the regular kind of vinyl gloves. These weren't rubber surgical ones. So they'll do jack squat against anything sharp. So I cut my thumb through the side of the, my gloves, started bleeding. I said, all right, I got to go deal with this now. And wasn't, again, super bad. It was maybe a couple millimeters in length, but through the side. So there's no real easy way to close a cut like that. And so it was bleeding a decent amount. Went to the first aid station, kind of cleaned it off. Went and got a, a Band-Aid and I wrapped it up. Put two pairs of gloves on. I was keeping an eye on it. It's like, all right, it's still bleeding, but I, I can't not do my job. And so I kind of went back to what I was doing and assembling the burger stuff. Just keep, kind of keeping an eye on it and keeping my left, well, as soon as my left hand, away from whatever I was doing just in case it was going to bleed a lot. And after about 20 minutes or so, I noticed it still hadn't stopped bleeding and... It was getting to the point where I was going to need to change my gloves again and actually get a, a different band-aid because it was a bandage because it was bleeding a decent amount. So I said, I, I think I better go actually deal with this. And uh, this is bleeding a lot. Uh, so I told my boss, I'm going to go uh, take five in the break room. And so I went out to the to the main floor of the cafeteria and got a drink. It's like a Powerade or something from the fountain machine. Like, I'm just going to get a drink and go sit down and see if I can I can dress this better so that it, it stops bleeding and can finish my day. And as I'm going out to go get my drink, I start getting a little dizzy. And again, this thing's been bleeding a decent amount up till now, and I hadn't eaten anything all day. I had, other than, than some water, I don't think there's anything in my system at all. So I started getting a little dizzy when I was out there getting a drink. So I said, okay, I definitely should probably go to the break room and sit down because, you know, I'm having trouble seeing it's getting dizzy. I walk back through the kitchen, and I'm like make, walking down this hallway to the break room where we are able to take our breaks and our lunches and whatnot. And I got so dizzy that I lost my balance and fell face first on the ground, which was a completely concrete paved floor. And I landed on my face. And because I was carrying a drink, I couldn't put my arms or hands out to break my fall. So I literally fell like on my chin face first and hit the ground drink went everywhere sh shot down the hall uh i didn't lose consciousness but i was still super dizzy and i managed to pick myself up having fallen it's like okay it's definitely not good and so I, I managed to crawl to the break room which was just feet away from where i fell and we had a couch just inside there where people could just like chill and you know talk on their phones or whatnot and so i'm sitting on the couch waiting for the room to stop spinning and I, I still don't really know what happened. Like my, I definitely hit my chin on the ground, and it you know it feels numb. But you know I can't see what's going on. I'm just sitting here trying to keep the room from spinning. And after maybe five or so minutes, I got my eyes closed, and then I hear just a scream, like a loud scream. And I wake up and look over to the side of the doorway, which is where the couch was sitting. And my coworker Eileen had walked in, and obviously she looked at me and screamed, and she'd run out by the time I looked over to see what was going on. And I, again, didn't know what happened. I thought maybe like she dropped something or whatever, and, and she went to go clean it up. And then I looked down and realized there is blood running down the front of my chef coat. And that's when I realized things were probably going to become complicated that day. So I'm sitting in the break room like I, I still don't know what's going on and obviously I'm bleeding from my face and My boss Tracy she comes in. She's got Eileen in tow and Eileen is Flipping the heck out. She looks like she's she's like almost hysterical and She pulls Tracy in the room and she's just like starts Shouting and whatnot and then my boss looks at me and she goes 
Uh, kiddo, you're gonna need some stitches. What? I was like, what are you talking about? And she's like, you cut your face open. I was like, oh no, I'm fine. I just fell. And she's like, no, uh, you can't see it, but uh, you're bleeding everywhere. We gotta get you to the ER. And I was like, <laughs> Edward says, rip. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, that's not good. So I go to the bathroom. She's like, uh, like, just go get something and like. Put something on your face so you don't bleed just all over the floor and then go go get your clothes and, like get your stuff and you know we'll go and so i go to the bathroom i look in the mirror and yeah it, it's not like a, a gash like a big thing across my entire face but under my chin there is a very visible cut and it is bleeding a decent amount so most likely what happened was i fell I broke my fall with my chin and cut it open on the concrete and made my way over to the break room, started bleeding down the front of my coat, and then my very erratic co-worker, of course it had to be her of all people that would find me, she walks in the door and just sees me lying there bleeding like down my face and she must have thought like someone tried to murder me or something. And so I, I get some paper towels and kind of trying to stop the bleeding, put pressure on it. I go, I change out of my, my chef clothes, my, my uniform that we had to wear, and we go, we walk up, and where we were on the campus had a health building, basically a medical building that people could walk in, like walk-in clinic type place on the campus where our kitchen was located, and she said, okay, we need to walk down there and get you looked at immediately to see how bad that cut is. And so we, we go walk down, it's, it's in the afternoon on a Saturday. So it's maybe about, eh, I'd say two o'clock. And there are people walking around. We go to the health building and it's closed for some reason. I don't know why it was closed on a Saturday, but it was, so I couldn't go there. And so she goes, okay, that's not gonna work. Uh, we're, we're gonna have to take you to the actual ER at the medical hospital down, you know, the other end of campus where, you know, they have all the facilities and stuff. And so we're sitting there outside the health building. I'm, I'm trying to, Keep the bleeding from getting bad as we're sitting there trying to figure out what to do and then my boss gets a call on her cell phone and so she answers it and she she says a couple things she says oh, okay all right all right and then she hangs up and i said well, what happened you know what what was the call and she said well one of the managers at the kitchen called the paramedics for you i said oh they did and she said yeah i guess they're they called after the incident so they're coming here to the health building. And I said, okay. She said, we'll wait for them, have them check you out and then figure out based on, you know, what they recommend we do with you. I said, okay. So we're sitting there again. It's middle, middle of the afternoon. There's people walking around. It's, it's a weekend, but there's just decent amount of student foot traffic walking around Two full sized fire engines come up the main stretch to where we were waiting outside the health building. And they pull up with the lights on. They didn't have sirens on. They had the lights on. They pull up and pull off along the side of the health building where we were waiting. And I kid you not, half a dozen fire dudes get out. And they come over and, you know, they start talking to me and they start talking to my boss. And like, well, what's going on? And is everybody okay? What happened? Kind of explain, you know, genius here fell, cut his face open. And so I said, okay, let's take a look. So one of the, the response guys is looking at my face and he looks at it, he said yeah that's a deep cut it's gonna need stitches and he said uh, I recommend you just take him down to the medical center to the ER and have them clean clean the cut out and stitch it there um, not it's not like a life-threatening wound or anything but he said it, it's it's pretty bad so you should go get it checked out and so he's working on me his five other peers are just kind of standing there just chatting and so I'm sitting there on the side on a bench while he's looking at my face. And he says, okay, I'm going to give you a, a dressing for it just to keep it kind of safe for now until you get to the ER. So the guy working on me, he gives me like a big thing of gauze and it's like a surgical tape that they use to secure stuff. And he straps it under my chin. So I have this big thing of, of gauze and like a foam type thing strapped under my chin, which looks incredibly conspicuous. All while people are walking by on their daily business or whatever, they see the lights, they see the fire engines, and they see 
five fire dudes standing around while one guy is strapping a big piece of gauze to the face of this one random dude sitting on a bench there. And my boss is sitting, she's just kind of waiting for them to get done. She didn't really have anything to say. But it was one of the most mortifying experiences because it's a spectacle. It didn't need to be, but for, I don't know who put the call in or what they said. I don't know if they said that someone got stabbed in the throat, but they, they came out in full force. And I'm sitting there, the focus of the attention for a little while while they do this. And eventually it, he gets the stuff fastened up. They head off. You know, I thank them. For their time. And my boss says, alright, let's head back to the, the kitchen. I will load you up in my car. I'll drive you to the med center. I said, alright. Well, thank you. So we do that. We drive across the campus to the medical center. She drops me off at the ER and then she's gone. And at that point, I went into the ER. I, I go get checked in. I tell them, alright, here's what happened. And they give me the forms to fill out for all of my information and whatnot and what happened. And I'm sitting in the ER for about three hours. It was not unusually busy, but it was busy enough. So I'm sitting there with a big thing of, of gauze strapped to my face, filling out paperwork and kind of just sitting there for three hours. Two, about, about two or three hours-ish. A long time. Just sitting there in the waiting room. And you know, it kind of is what it is. Eventually... They take me in there and they say, oh yeah, it's a really deep cut. We just need to clean it, give you stitches, and then, you know, you'll be fine. And I think I got about eight stitches in my face. And um, the, after all, all that was done, I eventually went back home. And that was pretty much the end of it. One of the fallout was I... I bit through my lip when I fell so I had all these cuts inside my mouth and my jaw was kind of messed up because I landed on it but the the wound itself wasn't too serious once they had it stitched but I couldn't shave for like two plus weeks after that and I don't grow good facial hair and I, I had no choice for that entire time and eventually, once I got my stitches out, it, I, to this day, have a scar on my chin where no hair grows. So if I try and do something like grow a beard, which I can't, there's a, a section about an inch long under my chin where hair won't grow from, from the scar. So facial hair will have a permanent crater in it no matter what. So I don't, I don't grow facial hair. But the fallout from the kitchen incident was also something I had to deal with. So this happened on like a Saturday. I'm pretty sure it was a Saturday. I showed up to work the following Sunday, the next day, aside from like a sore jaw and like some cuts in my mouth. After I got stitched up, I was fine. So I showed back up to work the next day. And as soon as I walk in the door, I start getting all of these questions from my coworkers in the kitchen. And one of my coworkers immediately comes out and says, oh, I, I didn't think you'd be here. I'm surprised to see you. And I said, oh, uh, so yeah, you probably heard about what happened yesterday. It's pretty bad. Uh, didn't mean to make a scene and my coworker goes yeah i i don't know what happened but uh eileen told us what happened to you or she she was there and so she told us what was going on i said well what did she tell you and my coworker goes oh she said that you cut your face open on a knife like you were you're going to go drop a knife off and you tripped and cut cut your face or something i said no i fell and cut my face open I said no that's not what happened I said, oh well that's what she said person goes off and said okay that's weird i go clock in start getting set up for my shift and one of the other chefs comes up and he goes hey are you all right um i heard about what happened yesterday and i said oh what did you hear he said oh i heard you were carrying a bunch of knives and you fell down the stairs and cut your face open and i said no like where did you hear that i said oh people are talking about it. like the whole kitchen is is was talking about what happened yesterday and so I said, no, I explained what happened for the second time. And, you know, it goes off. Another coworker comes up to me a little bit later and said, hey, are, are you all right? I heard you got into a fight with someone and they pulled a knife on you and they cut you in the face. I had to debunk like a half dozen stories. I'm not kidding. And they, they had stemmed from my one chatty coworker because she didn't know what happened. She just saw the aftermath. So I guess she just guessed what happened. And like a game of telephone, the whole incident evolved to all of a sudden I'm in like you know, in an 
anime protagonist knife fight for my life with someone in the kitchen. And by the end of it, I was like, I had to tell the story probably about 15 times that day with different people that were there. And it was like, that was damage control. It was kind of annoying. But eventually the whole thing kind of blew over. Everyone's like, yeah, it was an accident. It sucks. And there was not a serious injury, but it did cause a bit of a scene in the kitchen and then out in public for everybody. But the final bit of fallout, which was quite interesting to deal with I guess you could say was maybe about three months or so after this all happened it was considered about a time the whole thing had kind of blown over I was like oh yeah I remember that one time Uraku cut his face open on the job and you know it's pretty much just another thing of the past well, I'm opening my mail one day and I get a bill in the mail from the medical center and I open it up and it's a bill for several thousand dollars and I look at it and it's a bill for emergency crews and an ER visit and at, at this point in time during earth school I do not have a lot of money and I look at this and I double take and look at it and say why did they send me a bill and so I took that with me and Edward says, bro, are you okay? I heard you had a dream where Freddy Krueger cut you in the face. I think the knife fight story from that whole thing was my my, mo my favorite one because it's it's the most outlandish. Like, yeah, there was a knife fight, but the cops didn't get called and, and whatnot. But yeah, it, it, it was pretty wild how badly the rumor evolved to the point where I had to debunk like a dozen stories. So I'm looking at this bill. I'm looking at this bill, and obviously it's for the stuff that happened that day. And my immediate thought was, don't I have workman's comp if I get injured on the job? Because I was on the job when this happened. And it says, that's really weird. So I take the, the bill with me into the office the next time I'm there, and I'm asking my boss, I said, hey, the, they billed me for the stuff that happened when I had to go to the ER. And I asked my boss, I said, aren't I covered by a work, work person's compensation if I get injured on the job? And she goes, yeah, yeah, you should be. It's weird that they billed you. I said, uh, that's, I, I don't know why they're doing that. Um, go to our payroll offices where all the paychecks and stuff come from and ask them directly why, why they're sending you a bill. I said, okay, that's, that's kind of weird. So I, I just set aside time to actually go to our personnel and payroll offices in a different part of the area it wasn't in our kitchen building I had to go to essentially a separate part of the, the campus to go and track down a lead on what was going on so I go there and I start talking to folks I'm like hey look I, ha I have a question on a, a bill I received and it's really a do a work incident I just need to figure out who to talk to and they say okay you know go here talk to this person this person eventually after navigating around personnel offices for a bit I figure out who I got to talk to and I go in and I explain my introduce myself to hey I'm Raku I was working on the job I got injured there was a emergency response crew that came out I had to go to the ER and all the stuff explain what happened I said I'm trying to figure out why I got a bill and so the person in payroll I was talking to takes the bill and they look at it and they start plugging stuff into the system they say you said you're an employee here of the, the, the kitchen up, you know, in, in this area? I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was on, on the job and I, I got injured there. And they said, well, on your ER intake paperwork, they couldn't read your handwriting, so they didn't realize you were an employee. They thought you were just a random person that had to go to the ER. So that's why they billed you and not the actual organization for the work person's compensation they could read your handwriting they would have been able to find you in the personnel system and then this wouldn't have happened and I said oh can we get that fixed now and they said oh yeah we'll get your information you know give us your ID so we can verify who you are get it plugged in and then we'll get this thing paid and, and cleared so not only was there the social aspect of the whole incident that I had to deal with 
but I almost got stuck with the financial aspect of the incident, which I would have had to deal with. And that came down to handwriting, apparently. And I told that story to my parents on Homeworld, and they gave me no end of, of crap for it, because I have bad handwriting, I know. In my defense, after suffering a head wound and sitting in an ER, I will say that my penmanship wasn't the most pressing thing on my mind as I was sitting there bleeding from my face. But it is a good lesson learned as far as make sure you legibly fill out forms like that in the case of workers' compensation so that you don't get stuck with the bill and have to deal with that whole aspect. But at that point, you know, weeks after the incident happened, it was really more of uh, an insult to injury type thing. But that was the end of it. Once, once all that got cleared up, then the bill was gone and I didn't have to deal with it. And I... Managed to avoid any more hospital-related incidents for the rest of my time working in the kitchen, but that was easily the most public of stories that <laughs> happened when I was there. 